<laughs> I was wait I was waiting for you, mate. I've I realised that I've introduced the last like three podcasts. So I, I quite clearly uh, shows because I, I was just waiting for you. You you, you were just waiting for the intro. And, yeah. and I was like, oh, let's let's have a bit of mat open this bad boy. Oh, but, okay, right, all right. Here uh, we go. Look, let me go. <gasps> Hi Forrest, how are you? I can't get that. How are you? I'm all yeah. right, my friend. I'm uh, all good. I think I am calmer this week. Oh, really? Oh, I th- mate. I think so. You can't be less not calmer. Put it that way. You couldn't be. I've, I, well, if anything, I've, the other em- way. I've embodied the Emil Blonsky namastainus. I mm. think the, the, the now part two of going through She-Hulk in a moment, it's kind of, it kind of brought a new light to me, uh, but there is still bubbling rage, but I'm, I'm suppressing it. I'm <laughs> bubbling su- I'm su- rage? I'm suppressing it, yeah. Um, I, before we go too far into uh, She-Hulk, I um, want to make a disclaimer about something that me and Matt realised at the weekend, which was fucking hilarious. You might have forgotten by now. Um, uh oh. But basically, uh, I can't remember how I did it. I think because I was looking at what was going to come after She-Hulk. So I was mm. thinking ahead and I was like, right, what, you know, what's the next Marvel project in Phase 4? Mm. Uh, and it was at that point, Matt, that uh, I soon discovered, as you know, um, for some reason, we jumped from Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness, yeah. all the way to She-Hulk. Yeah, and we did that. We, we missed three projects we missed miss marvel we missed thor love and thunder and i am Groot. so we missed at least two of those that are probably 85 percent better than the one that we jumped to are you we, oh, oh forest are you saying we could have waited to do this for at least three weeks yeah boy are you could have, are you joking so you can we could have we you know and, and what's more irritating is we could have themed Miss Marvel in just in time for the Marvels, <laughs> which would have made oh so much God. so much sense. But rather than do that, we've had you go on an absolute tirade. Uh, that, and if anything, that's made me even have... more aggressively angry about this. I know. We could mate. have waited. We could have literally waited. Um, but then we'd have had to do it in time for Christmas. Which is that worse? Well, we could have like skipped it to the new year, but still, who wants to do that in the new year? At least we're getting it over in November, hey? Yeah, You're still man. with us, dear listener. Woo-hoo. How you doing? You good? Welcome back yeah. to another episode. I'm going to flail my arms a little bit like this. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we have got, we got, we're going to double it up because we're talking She-Hulk today. We're yeah. talking Loki episode six six today, the last episode. Yeah today mm. and we're also talking the marvels today um mm. so we will let you know when we're talking about which things so you can avoid it if you haven't watched um but we're gonna roll those little titles matt here we go oh uh, yeah we're back and uh yeah so here we are we are she hulking episodes five to nine just for context i've got even less notes than i did <laughs> for the last one we did um where i had virtually fuck all so do you want to know how many notes um, i got uh, of course yes please i have one note and, <laughs> and i'm gonna say it right now it says straight into a stupid montage ah dot l- <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic! My uh, my, my whole note. my whole uh, notes for episode five are lots of court cases, She Hulk copyright. That's it. Oh, uh, yeah. That's well, it. just to inform yeah. me what I've watched, basically. Um, which episode five? I think episode five uh, and episode six are hands down the worst episode episodes of the series. 
Oh, uh, you know, I, you know how we left last week's episode, mm. and I kind of like, I almost, if anything, if you watch the video in the reel, um, I, I'm almost shouting at my penis um, when I say why the way you are. Um, now I realised that. Um, now I wasn't shouting at my penis. I was just shouting <laughs> inwardly. At why is the MCU the way it currently is? And I think this is the one thing that's been overarching my brain. And actually, in honesty, it's making my brain feel quite foggy. Is mm. why is the MCU the way that it currently is? We went and saw... I, we'll, we'll talk about the Marvels later. But, like, you know, with this show and this episode, it did not help. The This... Oh, gosh. It just went off into a weird tyrant. And the other thing is, right, is that... Episode five is—is is it the wedding one? Is this—is it this? No, uh, is it, episode no. five. No, no, it's, it's the one after it. the court cases with uh, Titania um, yeah. trying to. She Titania's like she's got the brand. Yeah, she's stolen the brand yeah. She Hulk. Um, so the brand that that She Hulk two episodes ago didn't give a toss about and told the news like why are you labelling me She Hulk yeah. suddenly is absolutely taken to the name so much so she's really hell bent on the fact that Titania has stolen it. Now that I watched this episode, I watched five and six, um, mm. four and a half pints in uh, at oh. about twelve <laughs> wow. o'clock at night. <laughs> On Sunday. Did you did you have the points because that's what you were gonna do, or did that just happen? <laughs> so I went to a gig on Sunday <laughs> and I had a quite a few beers, and I came uh, back more pissed than I thought I was, mm. and I thought it was gonna be a good idea to watch a few episodes of She-Hulk because, well, if you're not pissed, I, it might help. It might, if anything, it might make it better, right? Yeah. So I yeah, thought yeah. I'd watch it. Um, no. Didn't help. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can I unequivocally no, say that, dear listener. Um, if you're going to watch She-Hulk and you need to be intoxicated to do it, don't do it. It's just not going to help. Um, if anything, it makes it worse. Because what I was finding is my, myself finding the, the, the comedy moments not even... Even less funny. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, it was, it was just... It was, like, grating. Um, mm. uh, th- there was nothing really of any substance in this episode in terms of, like any development for um for uh uh i need to say jessica jones then um for she hulk mm. um it was in terms of tatiana as well like i think the whole thing felt so contrived over the kind of like we're fighting over the name of she hulk i'm like okay i'd rather just see you just fight for a whole 30 minutes do you know what i mean like it, yeah, yeah i mean i understand the court case because that is what she hulk is and that's what jennifer walter there is but i think Underneath it all, we should have had a little bit more conflict. Just, just at least battle again in the in the um, in the courtroom. But this time round, up the stakes. It'd be nice to see Tatiana. Maybe she's kind of learnt some new skills or whatever it might be. Maybe she's mm. got a little trick up her sleeve. Just, I, I don't know. Again, it's I, I know they they didn't do that for quite clear reasons of what the tone and what the vision of the show is in terms of it's kind of it's not about the conflict. But you've got to remember at the heart of it. You are a Hulk. Mm. You are a Hulk. Okay. You smash I... things. <laughs> Isn't yeah. that the IP? Isn't or, or am I wrong? Is the She-Hulk IP not that the fact that she smashes things? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. That's what I was expecting. Yeah. No. No smashing thing. Uh, I, I think episodes. Well, like I say episodes five and six. I don't understand. Why make it a nine episode series if you didn't have nine episodes to fill? It, yeah, this you, is it. They've, they've given themselves more episodes than any other Marvel series, right? Mm. Uh, I think. Or well, it might be equal to another one, but it's one of the longest, regardless. Um, and and yet they, they didn't have content for it. So openly mm. didn't have content for it that she has to start episode six. Uh, they have to call episode six just Jen, and she has to make a joke of the fact that we haven't met Daredevil yet. And I'm yeah. like, so you've got so such a lack of content, you're making a joke out of there being a solo episode for Jen. Yeah, I'm like, literally. right, okay. So h- how about you just, in the editing room, scrap these episodes and give us the fucking episode that you actually intend to put any story, backing, drive, or interest behind? 
Because that... it's not even it's not even Tatiana who's a villain in this. She's no. just got a grievance. <laughs> like she's just got a beef. That's it. Like it's yeah. got nothing. It's it's not even it's not even warranted in terms of the episode it's so it's so bizarre and and again moving into kind of we'll go straight into episode six um mm. that's the wedding episode isn't it that is the wedding even the big, more so the big, and they, big wedding episode oh like, we're gonna oh. make a they, they literally became so self-aware to the point that they were like yeah this is a wedding episode completely standalone to anything else that's going on in the show ah, like, look look at all these characters that are going to come back and really make an impact in the marvel universe as a whole Oh, absolutely no one at the wedding will return in a Marvel series ever Why? again. Why? It, it's so empty. It's so shallow. I don't understand it. it. Yeah, I, it's, it, <laughs> we don't understand it, mate. We, and do, I don't, we don't. I, I, this is so difficult. This is so... I said... I was honestly watching these drunk um, and thinking, I don't know how I'm going to talk about this without. Uh, 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 how I'm going to talk about it. I'm, I'm having a lovely time. What a Saturday night. Rachel, get, Rachel, get me another beer. I'm having a. <laughs> You've seen me drunk. I don't know. Yeah. I, don't, I don't talk. I don't like that, am I? No, no, no. You're That's absolutely not like, revealing. You're not, you're not like that. How was the hangover the following day? It was bad. It was, was it bad. a bad one. Yeah. It was the bad. 30, the thirties hangover. I'm oh, sorry to segue, but thirties hangover is right. Do you have the same thing? I wake up next morning absolutely fine. I go, holy crap! What the hell's happened to me? I'm, I'm yeah, fine. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm fine. I'm telling. I'm walking down the street like guys. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> I'm fine. Yeah. Two o'clock in the afternoon. It's like a bomb hits me. <laughs> completely different personality. I'm gone for the next four days, mate. Like, I'm, <laughs> I've been run, starting to run down the street. It's midday. I'm eating my sandwich. Woohoo! And then, boom, two o'clock, death. You're gone for four days. Wait, what have you done to yourself? I, I, you count yourself lucky that it hits you at two o'clock. Ugh. Yeah, like, but- it, it, I, I'm, I'm there. Literally, and Sunday night, I woke up to go... Again, in your 30s, you like to go to the toilet during the night as well, quite a lot. Mm. Right? Woke up and I came downstairs and I was like, I feel even more drunk. To the point that I knew, I, I was like stumbling around in the kitchen, trying to get my bearings. I had to go back upstairs to fall asleep. And I was just like, I, like, I don't feel like I'm going to like get to the hungover. Oh, hello. Hello, Ooh. children. I don't feel like I'm going to get to the hangover stage because I'm already past it i'm still just still drunk but yeah. no it hit me at like nine o'clock in the morning mate and it just it? fell it fell oh. on me like a ton of bricks but i know i know why that happened though because what mm. happened is that i decided to watch she hulk without any snacks uh, i literally ooh. just had a glass of water i was watching two episodes i didn't eat anything oh no mate but that no but that's good for me that's good if i eat or, uh like late into the drunk mode or early yeah. morning, late night, then I would just be ill the next day. Like, really? as in, I feel sick. Whereas mm. if I just have water, then I've just got a headache uh, and then and tiredness the next day. Mm. Well, uh, look, look, this is welcome to the 30s, mate. Well, thank you so much, mate. Um, do you think Jennifer <laughs> Walters had this in the 30s? Just bring it back. <laughs> just I'll, find, I'll find a way to... Hook that, hook that fishing rod, and well, bring us back to the. To be fair, she does get drunk in the wedding episode, and, and if anything, mm-hmm. it does bring a little bit of light and comedy into the into the what is it, an atrocious episode. Um, it is, yeah. I think, oh God, it, I think those are the only bits that I kind of enjoyed. The um, the guy that turned up with the with the media, like kind of, oh, I'm a, I'm this charming guy. You're a stranger, and I'm here to flirt with you. Let's go on a date and burn. It's like. So surface level, so yeah. surface level, and you know that there's an ulterior motive there. You know that there's something else going on there because it's quite obvious in the writing. Um, but I think underneath it all, it just, it's just it, it just felt such an a, a trivial thing. And again, the the bride was an absolute bitch. Yeah, can, she? Can, I'd like to do. I'd like to ask any female uh, listeners. I would love to have your take on this because one, one of the, so so much of this series is about uh, you know women's attitudes to different uh, various different life 
things, right? And one of those mm. is the dating cycle and going out and doing this and that. How do you... How? What are your thoughts? So my, my thoughts, as a male, I have to put out there, uh, is that I feel it very kind of like... There's all of these fantastic things that Jennifer talks about, and she she's very eloquent in the way she delivers them, and we see some really great themes explored. Mm. And then, throughout her dating cycle within this program, she is always going for tall, handsome, like it, 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 it's an absolutely like stereotypical like no personality and maybe that's the point right and i can maybe i can see that maybe that's the point of but 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 i'm also a bit like what well, isn't the series about challenging those stereo uh, like kind of going well actually why what she's not focusing on personality is basically what i'm getting at there's nothing yeah. about this series that's like she she in the wedding she clocks this guy it's like uh, it's looks even earlier in the series is a big bulky man that she goes home with and and, it, and and for me that i i don't understand that kind of uh what's the word like it's well, well it's, it's, Jennifer Waters quite clearly is the girl about town. She's not looking for anything serious. She's looking for a bit of fun. She's used, like you said, you like the use of media and you like the use of kind of the, the digital usage of of the show in terms of how they communicated and socialized. Mm. You know, dating apps, all that kind of stuff. I think that's the kind of person that she is as a character. She's so so I can I can and I can yeah get with that. That's absolutely fine. We can we can use that as a character arc. However. It all just felt, it just, again, just really just trivial and just stereotypical. Do you mm. know what I mean? Like, like you say, like the, the the people that she was dating, all just complete assholes. I get, I get it. it's because it's a, it is a feminist show, right? So you've got you've you've got this kind of arc around. You know, the the guys that she's dating are not nice guys. They're not guys that you should mm. want to be dating, right? Um, but then equally, just going back to what I was saying in the wedding wedding episode. You know, even the bride was being an ass to to Jennifer as well. Yeah. So you've got, so you do have these kind of other sides around it as well, where this, you know, the, the bride is like, oh look, I only want you here because you're she hulk and you've, I want you to be she hulk around here, but don't take this, you know, the, the limelight. And there's this kind of, um, I want to say Gen Z kind of. Uh, view on it as well, of like, I want you here for the world that they like to use in Gen Z clout, right? As a millennial, I don't like I don't like saying clout because it's weird. Um, it's coming out of my my thirty three year old face, but like that is quite, you know you're going to make my reputation look great and you're going to make me look better because of your mm. presence being here. That kind of um, selfish acts and those kind of um, those kind of reactions are quite, to be honest, fair play, right? But there is there are you know you know male and female kind of stereotypes that are played. However, I think to the detriment of the show, it doesn't mm-hmm. really doesn't really add anything. I mean, if you're again, there were some characters that they could have been absolute arseholes, but I'd be interested to find the why. You know, why are they arseholes? What's going on underneath yeah. it? Yeah, hundred percent. That's far more interesting as a viewer. Well, far more interesting to me. Any like generally, I'm, I'm always yeah. intrigued. But I, I think, yeah, absolutely. And, and also, outside of her two friends. Uh, names I can't remember that she works with and her best mate as well, oh, isn't pa- it? Pog, not Pogo. I would say Pogo. It's not Pogo. Pogo. Pog. You, oh, you mentioned Pog. 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 Is that it? Pog and um. Pog. Let me go. Oh, I'm just doing the old research as we're chatting. So Nikki, isn't it? Oh no, Nikki's the actress. Nikki. Ginger. 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 That's it. So you've got Ginger and you've got. Um, no, no, no! It is Nikki. It is Nikki. The character is Nikki. Oh, the, Nikki! And, yes, and yeah, Augustus is Pug. Yeah, loving the name Ginger. Uh, Nikki, yeah. So Nikki, yeah. Fab. Uh, get to the point. Those two, <laughs> who we, who I would argue, we see the least of in the whole series, yeah. right? Are the oh, I would put this out there are the only nice people in the whole show. Yeah, I, and, and I think that's true. Even, Jen- even Jennifer Walter, for the reasons we've just outlined, you could argue, actually, it's very surface level, uh, yeah. you know, and, and although we've had it, and it, and, and it's in another thing, you find it really hard to kind of tune in with a character, because the whole of episode one is about her being, you know, re, re, 
she speaks to Hulk, and it's very much like you know this is what it is to you know how I feel living being a woman and how you know all of this, all of this, and then and then just goes to absolutely crush all of that with every stereotype she could think of for the rest mm. of the series, mm. you know, fighting in a wedding and do it, you know, everything about it. So and I'm like, there's almost no character in the show apart from her mates you could argue are nice mm. people. And I'm like, that's just not a good program to watch. And and also, when you're trying to you're trying to hit all of these like points about uh, you know driving home issues to young people, you can't do that when almost no character is likable and every character then adheres to every stereotype. Skins, I... uh, uh, skins you know the show Skins. Yeah. Skins ne- never set out to teach young people how to do the best thing. It was mm. every stereotype. It was every. It was drug, sex, rock and roll. Didn't apologise for it. It was what it was. Right. Yeah. That's cool. You cannot have a show which, at, which tries to go out there to be like, oh look, this is happening in society. It's disgusting. Whilst then, seventy five percent of the time, adhering to every stereotype out there. It's like, which one are you trying to be? Don't be a message. If you're then going to tarnish that message into two, mm. that, that's my view anyway. Hundred percent, mate. You just you nailed it there. In terms of, again, going back to Nikki and Pug, right? Those two are down to earth characters. Characters that we actually, if anything, I wanted to see more of. I mm, really enjoyed definitely. the moment where Pug and Nikki went out on their little capade when they were looking for um, the, uh, the. I was going to say the costume designer, um, the guy that makes oh, all the outfits and yes. stuff. Yes. And they yeah. went to that kind of like, uh, like back, back lot. Jameson. Of like, Is it Jameson? Jameson. Yeah, it might yeah. be Jameson. And they, you know, they went and found all kind of like the cheap versions of the Avengers, the Avengers, and all that kind of stuff. That was funny. Mm. And as well, in Nikki's episode where she was um, uh, representing the invincible guy who had all these ex wives and he's done all these ex wives wrong and, and they're all trying to get a court case out of him, trying to kind of get settlements out of him. And there was this really great moment where Nikki was just sorting it out. She was absolutely hustling it, going, you want this? Great, you're going to get that. You want this? You're going to get that. And then, you know, kind of really, again, just using the character and her kind of like, you know, she the, the kind of the boss bitch kind of thing that she kind of got. And I think that worked really well. I really enjoyed it. And again, Pug, I wanted to see more Pug in the series. Mm. We didn't get enough. Um, but like, those were the two characters that actually, to be honest, were written for the style of the show fairly well. Mm. Because totally. I was interested by their characters, but everything, totally you know, on board with it. Yeah, uh, give give us more of them. I have a whole show, show of that. Don't yeah, every yeah. yeah. I, I, I can't repeat myself for another five minutes, but I've said <laughs> what I need to say on this man. Uh, so let's talk. Epi- can we talk about Daredevil's entrance now? Uh, I mean, Christ, we'd be skipping a couple of episodes. Episode seven, guy goes off the radar. Uh, oh, but guy, guy is in. That's not the name of the character. The guy from the wedding goes off the radar. The retreat happens. Blonsky's oh, retreat, yeah. doing a load of counselling. We get quite a funny scene, which then goes on for way too long with different superheroes in a counselling session. Uh, we get a bit of that. Uh, the- what do you think of that? Because it just felt like it was just it was a whole therapy session in an episode. Yeah, it was just, just too long. Again, like literally no direction with the episode. Like the editor's just gone, fuck, you know. Well, um, we've got nine episodes to fill. We've done 40 hours of content. So I'll tell you what, let's just put all the content in. Let's, yeah. I, I, I'll, it's like they didn't hire an editor for this. No. They just went and fucking just shove it all in. See if it sticks. Because, oh my, why do we need the whole scene, Matt? Why Mommy, do we the, need the, all of that? The first part oh. of that montage is just, and this is why I said the stupid montage bit, because in that episode we see Jennifer just kind of like absolutely smitten with her new boyfriend. And it's like, you finished the episode with the first encounter. How, how, are, we, how are we meant to believe how that has developed that quickly? I mean, it just, it just moved so ridiculously fast. And then, mm. and then she's just, the only thing she was focused on about was getting cell service so she can talk to this guy. Again, if that's her character choice and if that's her objective, that's fine. But then we've got to find the reason underneath that because at the time, I don't, I don't know this character that she's in, you know, falling in love with. I we mm. don't know this guy. We needed to know more. If you know, and again, you know, the fact that if he was working with this kind of incel kind of group, you know, online and stuff, 
we could have seen a little bit more of that prior to this moment. You know, hundred percent. We should we should have seen that prior to the wedding episode. Yeah, that that should yeah. have been a whole like we should have multiple like, oh, episodes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, there's you know, there's the mo- no, the not guy. him. Don't go yeah. for him. Yeah, not like oh, who's this random bloke? Oh, okay, another bloke who's a twat. Oh, brilliant, fantastic. How many she met now? Yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah, agreed. Um, so that happens. We get the retreat. We'll move. We'll move off that episode straight away, Matt, because that's literally, <laughs> literally the whole Honestly, episode was a retreat we have, episode. <laughs> we have never gone so quickly through some episodes <laughs> like this. Like this is unheard of. But yes, I, I agree. Please. <laughs> um, episode eight. Uh, we get the uh, leapfrog. Leapfrog turns up. Uh, who's had injuries of his suit? So then, yeah. uh, so he goes to. I think it's Jameson is the costume yeah. guy, or surname is Jameson. Um, basically, uh, trying to do a lawsuit against J- uh, Jameson, uh, and then we get Matt Murdock rocks up, rocks up into the courtroom. Yes, uh, a little bit late. A little bit, yeah, <laughs> a little bit late. Please, please, could have you have just turned up three episodes ago? Would have been nice. <laughs> yeah, I've yeah, done yeah. something else as well with the series. Um, now, I, as much as I think this did actually help having him involved in this in this particular episode, um, because the my favourite scene in the whole series in terms of like dialogue scenes yeah. was the bar scene that Jennifer has with uh, Matt Murdock post the. Um, hearing with the frog yes um and the and and again there wasn't really much to it in terms of development but it was just it felt like it was written for that circumstance it was flirty it was um it it was they were connected there was chemistry with both of those actors and it was delivered well Um, and and when i was watching i was like oh Oh, okay. No, I actually, <laughs> I actually enjoyed that bit, you know. And I think it, the inclusion of Matt Murdock works. And then, and we'll talk about it in a moment. Then it just kind of went a little bit sideways. But I think that episode had an opportunity with the frog as well. Now, Forrest, you haven't seen the boys, have you? No, mate. M- mate, we have got next year, twenty twenty four, dear listener. Mm. If you if you're listening right now and you're a fan of the boys, you need to send an email right flipping now to don't be here podcast at gmail.com my brain went blank then okay and let Forrest know that he needs to watch the boys and we need to review it next year because I think mate seeing as MCU is going to be a little bit quiet for 2024 Mm. let's get on the boys because there's a new series coming out next year Um, anyway the frog right has an opportunity to have this kind of boys-esque kind of character where you've got this really unusual superhero this really unusual power and ability that could be used for comedy effects right i know they tried to do it but it just wasn't enough i mean for starters it wasn't enough in terms of the fight scene but like they could have had all kinds of comedy opportunities there and they didn't lean into it because i would have thought that to be fair for a show like that they probably should have um mm. but yeah again just a very court-based episode i th- i think my favorite one of the core characters in this series is the guy who commits suicide rather than yeah. um, fight like faces demons basically. We're uh, you know ex partners and all. I honestly I thought he was incredible. When did you talk about him already? Did I tell totally you? Yeah, miss that? about the guy talking about when Nikki was sorting out all those ex wives with a deal. Sorry. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, you did bring up. Yeah. Absolutely. That that was in, Yeah. Sorry. That was incredible. And like hit him, I could have had like a, a whole series from of different scenarios. Not, and it wouldn't just be ex wives. I think he would not. He would do it with everyone. I've never. Fa- and it was great. It was brilliant. That was awesome. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Leapfrog, massively mischanced. I'm like, again, another random character in it for five minutes. Yeah. And we're just like, oh, there he is. And oh, he lovely. Goes. It could have well, been funny. I don't know. It's just, why do we, why so many different cases? Just have one case, which is the Matt Murdock case, through the whole series. Mm. Sole narrative, really focused, job done. Didn't <laughs> need whole series of copious amounts of cases that right. not, none of them are ever going to feed in any any you know any time soon or ever yeah um but yeah so that happens we get a fight scene with daredevil yep we do we get the daredevil fat scene uh which is good short-lived again yeah it could have been longer 
incredibly short lived. Again, it kind of you know, if anybody that hasn't seen Daredevil, this is a, then a reintroduce. No, you got and actually, to be fair, we've got to remind ourselves as well. This was the first time the Daredevil was thrown into the MCU, and there was a lot of buzz around it. And this was a whole, uh, to be fair, a big reason why a lot of the fan base watched this series to see Matt Murdock come to the MCU. And we got this first fight scene, and, and it was good in parts, to be fair, in terms of the you know showing the dexterity of the character, um, the physical kind of nature of his abilities as well. It's all there again. It missed a very vital ingredient in terms of the grittiness of what the character is, and obviously I understand they couldn't have done that. We're talking about this being a, a you know, a, a self-aware family show. Um, it, you know, I so fine, I'll let go of that. But the problem is, it just wasn't enough. wasn't enough. We needed more time with him. We need more time with that fight scene as well. Um, add mm. depth to the, you know, to the whole the whole narrative as well. Yeah, short-lived. Yeah. Um, and then they and then they get it on. That's it. They, they get do. home. Moves very quickly though, doesn't it? Moves very quickly. Um, the, I mean, Jennifer Waters doesn't doesn't hang just, around, does she? She's not mess around, <laughs> mate. Um, you know, it, we do we get a timeline for these nine episodes? Because I don't know. Yeah, that's so it, true. Like a few weeks. I mean, Crush is going to town. That's like, so true. I mean, it's got Mad. to be a, it's got to be a few months though, right? Because at the end, when the Hulk comes back, he's been to space. Like, yeah, true. Yeah, maybe there's some sort of like timey stuff there. Some timey wimey stuff. Timey wimey. Maybe not. He can, you know, jump, jump galaxies, can he? In his little <laughs> he jump can. thing. He can jump galaxies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, cameras and SWAT team on her ass. I'll put <laughs> as a final <laughs> sentence for the end of the episode. Um, uh, and then episode nine. Then we're at the final, the final episode, which um... <sighs> okay, Forrest. <laughs> do we do we really need to talk about this final episode again? <laughs> We've already it, done it, but it's so good. I mean, it's so. Good. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even say it seriously. <laughs> it's oh my god! It's it. Rem- what is the American like? What is that American lights? Um, it was the first ever iteration of like Made in Chelsea, Towie. It was the American version, like Beverly Hills or something. And it uh, was, you know, you know what I mean. And it was, no. and and then at the end they was went it all the met- hills. Oh, it might be. And, it, it, and the at the end they went all meta, didn't they? Because they were break, they were showing that it wasn't like scripted. Oh no, yeah. it was scripted. It was scripted. I yes, I think. Yeah. It, I think. It was and, it, and then they Is kind of broke. Yeah, I think yeah. so. And then they kind of remove like a thing, and it all you see the cameras, you see all the crap, and and and, 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 and you know that, that was what happened in the last episode. <laughs> yeah, that and it and it's like the program that that happened to the hills, whatever it was, was naff. Right, so you are instantly comparing yourself to naff other programs that do the same thing. No, there's Where- no program can ever do that right, and, and it couldn't be done. It shouldn't be done. It's it's a crap device. Now, the, the, watching it the second time, and we spoke to somebody at Comic Con about this. I'm sorry, I can't remember your name, but they were saying like, just because it was comic book accurate, doesn't mean it would translate on the mm. TV screen. And I watched it with that thought and I was like, yep, it does not translate on the TV screen. As much as it is comic book accurate in terms of her jumping out of the comic book strips and realising, oh, I'm going to a comic book, this isn't real life. Fine, okay. But putting it in the series at this point where we're trying to really kind of move phase four into phase five to introduce new characters, introduce all these threaded storylines, introduce been Hulk's son like you just got to okay let's be honest that's not the best idea right now and mm. when they did it as much as they did it for laughs it wasn't taken seriously like it wasn't even like a big thing they didn't even hype that up it wasn't even used appropriately it was just yeah look how silly we can be now look at us we're the MCU being all meta and it's like no no because how do you follow that yeah how does she Hulk come back from that because I again, well, like we we know, if we are going to see Jennifer Walters back at some point, I'm assuming we will. In the back of my mind, I'm going to be like, well, the last time I saw her is that she completely broke the fourth wall, 
completely broke the fourth wall to the point that she was out of 616 and she was in our world talking yeah, to, yeah. to a robot K-Dog. I mean, that was silly, wasn't it? I mean, they could have just used K-Dog. Like, honestly, give that poor man some screen time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was. It was like I say. I don't know if there's much more to to say on the on that tragedy that occurred in the last episode. It, it, it's just the uh, whole series, mate. It, it's just what what you tell me. I would love to go to MC like the the House of MCU, House of Disney, whichever one you want to go to, and just go. You give me three sentences. Of what this series is and what I need, what 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 as a viewer I should be getting out of this series, because there's nothing. It, it, it is all over the place. There is no yeah. central thread. There yeah. is nothing to achieve out of this first series of She Hulk. There's no clarification whatsoever. And I, I, and I'm like, you know, I, I, I'm still no better off than I was episode one. I just know that Jennifer Waters is is She Hulk, but she wasn't in the first episode. My final thought, and my final thing that I'm going to say on She-Hulk, because I'm already done by it now, by now, um, <laughs> is that The Eternals was better than this. And we have spent the last year and a half, I know you just, yeah, you, you, you make that look. It was worse. <laughs> Forrest, uh, it was worse. It was I, worse. I, do you know, why? the reason why I'm looking at you like that, Matt, is because, sadly... On second run, I would have to agree. It, it, it is, and it's like okay, okay. We're not we're not here to bash she, she Hulk at all. We come. Well, you, we always, you fucking are. I, I know. <laughs> that's the thing. <laughs> it's, it's, it's I'm so aware. The worst thing I've ever seen. But I'm not here to bash She Hulk. What's <laughs> I, I'm being critical, but I, there's, there's, it's really difficult to not be emotional around it because it's wrapped around me being a fan of the Marvel Cinematic Universe since the day it started. And mm. ultimately, I don't care what character it is. I don't care what gender the character is. As long as you're telling a story that is compelling, that has layers in the narrative, that is developing a character, which is telling stories that are reflective of our world, which it did to a certain extent, it's got it's got to feed into a bigger story as well. It's got to feed into so that is what the MCU is, and this was the this for any if, if anything you know we've been talking about this. I've been watching so many videos about Miss Marvels, the Marvels, and then we'll talk about it in a minute. But like that being like that has killed the MCU. I think mm. this is this is it. This is what potentially has been the most damaging thing for the MCU. Forget about the Marvels. I honestly, this this really was a massive, massive miss for me. I I do not want to watch it again. I do not really? want to watch it again. I, I'm sorry. I, I, I was thinking we next year maybe we do a podcast and episode. <laughs> we just give it one more chance. I'm out, mate. <laughs> you can find lucky. yourself another co-host. I quit. <laughs> uh, do you think there'll be a second series? If there is, it needs to be very different. It needs to be a, there needs to be different writers on board, different directors. So much whole... shorter, mate. Don't yeah, do nine episodes, what... six maximum episodes. <laughs> yeah. Until you can find its groove, it should only have six episodes. How oh, Loki? Yeah. To tell me why Loki gets six episodes and that gets nine. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Makes that sense. Right, I tell you what. So that is She-Hulk, dear listener. Okay, what we're, we're going to do now is we're going to we're going to have a quick break. We're going to have a little advert break. I wonder what adverts we'll get this time round. All right. <laughs> um, after that, we are going to be talking about the Marvels and the Loki season two episode six finale. Uh, if you haven't watched any of those or either of those, feel free to disappear. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much as well. We have reached one thousand nine hundred Instagram <laughs> followers. Woo! It is insane. That is insane. We're going to be. In, we're going to aim to get to a road to the two thousand for Christmas. It's going to be great. We've got some ideas. It's going to be brilliant. Um, but yes, let's have a little have a break. And let's return in a moment. Right, okay. 
Here we go. So let's start with the Marvels. Okay, so myself and Forrest went and saw it on Friday, um, last Friday. Um, now there's been lots of controversy, <laughs> just to say straight away. There are a lot of people that really enjoyed it. There are a lot of people that find it quite a mid-movie. Some people that absolutely hated it and have scathing reviews. It's it's all over the place. And let's be honest, that's mm. classic MCU right now. Of course it's going to be like that. Um, but we're just going to give you a kind of quick like, little rundown of what we found, you know, how we found the movie and stuff. Um, but Forrest, I think it's got to be agreed that it wasn't the best thing, but it wasn't the worst thing. It certainly wasn't the worst thing. Yeah. I I controversially said to you, Matt, on the way out, I rate this higher than Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. You did. Which for you which but that is on the background of as we have talked about in at length, uh, I'm not a Doctor Strange th- fan at all. Uh, it's not Bill for me, it's not my really? kind of cup of tea. Oh no, I know, I know, really, I know. It's a surprise no to everybody. Way. But um yeah, so I yeah, I do rate this higher, certainly higher than Eternals, certainly higher than She Hulk. Um it, it, it I I'm just gonna start off Matt by I am on Rotten Tomatoes for it. Um oh, okay. and it would be We haven't uh, done that in a while. That's got well, bunked quite recently as well. I know I but what they did, you know but... he, you know. Um We'll, we'll, we'll allow it. We'll it's allow like, it. Uh, what do you reckon a tomato meter is? What would you give? And that's the official review. I think it's 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 probably quite high on the on the back of what I you know Rotten Tomatoes have been doing recently with the MCU. I'm going to say okay. about 80, 82. 80, 82. 61 percent. Oh. So sixty one percent. Okay. What do you reckon for the audience score? Uh, 77. 77. 84. 84. Okay. See, it's rating is a it's rating good for the audience members, Matt. I so I I enjoyed it. I I thought it was brilliant. Uh, I think that <laughs> your face. I th- I thought it was a brilliant. fun. It was a fun. F- yeah, I brilliant. thought it was brilliantly fun. I thought it was good. Uh, I think there are massive issues with it. There are multiple times where it is quite evident that too much was cut from the film. Film should have been at least half an hour longer. Um, the whole there are various bits in it. Uh, we won't do a full review because we'll do a full review in, like next we'll year probably. It, yeah. won't. Um, but there are certain parts of it that shouldn't have been cut. Uh, or, or should have been done if it wasn't done, but I, I think it was just cut. Um, I really thought they and they sh- miss Miss Marvel is uh, brilliant. That actress is, is incredible. Uh, Iman Iman Man, yeah. Villani, um is is amazing. I haven't watched uh, Miss Marvel yet, so that's why I'm excited for next week. But I think they should have utilised her cartoon style throughout the film i think what what was also missing from this film was its own identity and i feel like that's what would have given it it there was comedy tropes from guardians of the galaxy in which case why am i not watching a guardians film there was uh such as the cat um bit um there was a couple of moments which just felt like pure guardians Mm. you the fights did feel like okay this is something maybe a little bit new the 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 three of them as a dynamic was cool but i would have liked that through the uh through the optics of miss marvel or uh, miss marvel kind of creating that in a cartoon yeah. way so these scenes should have been like okay this is what we're gonna do so when they all had the powers it would have been awesome for captain marvel to go right miss marvel show us how we need to approach this and she would have done it all as a cartoon that for me would have been cool fair enough yeah i mean that's fine i think um so for me i think it was fun in parts i thought some of the um like the uh i really enjoyed the first 20 minutes i thought the tone of that was really nice i kind of agree at, to a certain extent with kamala's journey i think other than it being comic book strict i just i just kind of wish it was kind of maybe for more from her perspective um mm-hmm. let's be honest captain marvel was very much a secondary character in what was originally her sequel um 
so again, in really interested on how and why that happened. The fact that maybe the studio didn't have enough confidence on Brie Larson delivering again as Captain Marvel, so they had to bring in two other characters to kind of support her. I would have been interested to make this more of a Miss Marvel standalone first movie with then mm. these characters around it. The other again, if it like we finished with the idea of that you know, Kamala was gonna find the Young Avengers, she went and found Kate Bishop. I found that bit that mid credit scene really exciting. If that was what we were leading to, that is what we should have had quite clearly throughout the whole series, uh, uh, film series, the movie. So I think, you know, I think we could have had that a little bit more from Kamala. Uh, but again, there were just some fundamental, terrible bit of script writing. And again, the villain was not a villain. It, it had no substance. It was clearly just put there as a means to have some sort of antagonist to serve something else. Um, there was no real threat. How the hell did she get the universal weapon? That thing got destroyed. I don't understand. That got destroyed in Guardians. So how was that built back together? We could have seen that. that we, again, we need to play, play these kind of threads in, in the stories. Flipping Nick Fury was not the Nick Fury I have just watched in Secret Invasion. They were two completely separate characters. Did this movie but take place before? But don't you feel it's the Nick Fury that was established in Captain Marvel, though? But this is the thing. Is this the Nick Fury that was prior to Secret Invasion or after Secret Invasion? Um, uh, it'll be... Because mm. the then my perspective on that would change a little bit. But again, if this is after mm. Secret Invasion, there is so much that's going on with Nick Fury right now. Like, in terms of his character and what he's doing, you know, but beyond that point of, you know, the end of finale of Secret Invasion... There was none of that played. He ended up just being a cat sitter for the whole movie. Uh, mm. It was just very, it was just very convoluted, and again, it just felt like none of these writers really took any consideration what else is going on around the MCU. Um, and once again, we got this kind of like formulaic MCU movie. wasn't great, wasn't the worst, um, but the, yeah, you know, I, you know, the only thing that stood out for me was Kamala Khan um, and the mid credit scene and the end credit scene. That's it. That's really it. Uh, you know, I, mean, I would watch there it again. Were, there, there was only one cr uh, credit scene, mate. Or oh, was it not a mid? No. The, well, oh. the, mid, the mid is the one, mate. Oh, oh the big really? Oh. X-Man beast. Yeah, the Young oh, Avenger yes. is how the main film went, finished. That's mate. right. That's right. That's, that's, listeners, just how much uh, Matt was focused on this film. Uh, <laughs> I, was, I wasn't going to say this before, uh, but uh, I did turn around at one point and Matt was asleep. I was not asleep. I shut my eyes. Yeah. Yeah, it was, you know, there was snoring and sleepwalking. <laughs> Jacket, <Check it. laughs> um, but yeah, uh, it's um, I I disagree. So there's been a lot of talk about the villain, um, the villain uh, being played by Zor Ashton. Um, Darben is the name of the villain. Um, I. So I, f I look at it from this perspective, and it kind of is the same perspective for when you mentioned about why you know is this why is this not a Captain Marvel standalone? Why has it got two others? Blah blah blah. The issue the issue that MCU have is that Captain Marvel supposedly has more power than anybody else. Right? She is the lead Avenger. She has the utmost power. Hence, why they had to get rid of her for Endgame. She like you know she could only be in it for a tiny bit because essentially Thanos would have been dealt with movies ago right mm. uh, and, and this is why she's so like here there and everywhere now the villain for this film couldn't be a traditional villain neither could it be a villain that they that the marvels would want to destroy because essentially captain marvel would destroy her within five seconds because if we are led to believe that she is the strongest avenger if you are pairing her up with two other people she would, you know, she, that Darwin would have been done within seconds. So it, it had to have a story that meant they weren't trying to kill her; they were trying to take this, you know, this object away. Uh, and also, the villain couldn't be very strong. She, her, and Captain Marvel are only in the same place three times throughout the film um, because of that. And also, I think that also fed into why Captain Marvel couldn't have another film. She couldn't have, Captain Marvel couldn't have another film within the current events of the MCU. Otherwise, she'd deal with any threat there is. She, there's got, you know, she can only emerge at times where they really require her. 
Otherwise, mm. it's uh, otherwise every issue the Avengers ever face would would be solved in minutes. So it kind of just destroys any any fun. So I, I feel like they missed an opportunity in in having an, even a, a movie before this with Captain Marvel. The actual sequel should have been the movie of her uh, defeating and getting rid of the supreme intelligence. I know we saw that in a flashback, but like mm. yes, she committed genocide. She killed a lot of people, right? Mm. A lot of people died in Kree at the hands of Captain Marvel. That is a that is a toll. That is a big weight, and that should be something that should be explored even further. It was lightly handled in this movie, so and I think, incredibly I think lightly. That must have been a victim of the cutting room floor. That, uh, mu- yeah. that must have been. It's a shame. Uh, 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 also, there you know, and I won't go too far into this because of lots of reasons. But could it be? that there was additional content about that, but given current world events, they took it out. Possibly, mate. And, Possibly. We're, and, we're, and I wonder whether that will emerge. Now, I don't think anything emerges has been said about that yet, but there was certainly one scene where Captain Marvel kind of uh, explains the scenario and it and it happens out of nowhere. They emerge from a ship, she starts talking about what happened like within seconds and the conversation is two minutes long and then it goes back to the, the narrative. Mm. And, and I, yeah, I would look at that and go, hmm. I wonder whether there was a longer conversation. There might have been more scenes, but actually Disney thought right now with current world events, the last thing we want to be doing is is exploring that. Yeah, yeah. I th- yeah Which fair, might perhaps, uh, and also why we have had no secret invasion like element to it. Like, There's a lot, I think, what is, is currently going on might have massively affected it. But it was quite clearly this was an MCU movie that was just generated to create a, fa- a family fun experience with very little implications or kind of suggestion of anything yeah like that coming through. And, and I think it achieved that. Don't you yeah, think I, that I achieved it? No, yeah. I do. I, I agree. It did. I do. I do feel mm. like it was a family fun movie. Um, it just didn't. But it didn't serve the greater story arc the, the, in terms mm. of moving it forward. The, and I think kind of tagging along. The, with the end credit sequence as well uh, it just kind of felt like it was all very last minute again again i think i think yeah i i would probably add to that though that actually marvel have to explore avenues like this if we are getting to the stage with the multiverse where we're going to have lots of different stories happening in lots of different worlds yeah so there will there will be and, and that's kind of what you know what i've said in the last couple of podcasts if if they are hoping to do solo adventures in future that have no ramifications on the wider MCU, then actually this was a good way to explore how they might possibly do a film like that. Yeah, true. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, and I, I, th- I think they did do it well. I, I think, you know, I would have preferred longer, a bit more of the actual plot what happened in the film. I thought... The singing world was re- like really cool if they had actually seen it all the way through. So they start, they came onto the planet, they start singing. We get the weird dance. It was quite, it was quite funny. It felt too much like Guardians comedy to me. Yeah, I was I mean, a bit like Larkins, it just felt like having kittens. It was all Guardians yeah, energy. It's, that just it's was all misplaced. Guardians, and it, and it, and I'm like, and the singing world is cool in its own right but you have to see it through so when when the villain comes on the planet and they suddenly all stop singing and they're just regular folk and you're like well hang on a minute you've just established them for 15 minutes so why are they not singing like a really dark lord of the rings type chant now the villains come on that would have been hilarious right Mm -hmm. it's like she comes on and they're like oh no she's back again (laughs) like all of that stuff it would have just been cool and it would have lived into that world but no it's just like oh here's here's the gag and and that's it and that's why you know guardians do that better quick gag job oh, done 100%. that's that's a guardian's job so. uh, the, the 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 theme and the tone of that movie wasn't really clear at all um mm. but hey look that was the marvels mate can we talk about loki let's talk about loki okay so Lo- loki season two finale mate oh. holy crap the god of wow, stories wow, wow. is here what an end what are your mm. thoughts man 
What am I thought? I thought it was. I thought it was great. I thought it was great. I think that what I haven't seen much of, and I think personally will be played on a lot once mm. we get to Secret Wars and the Kang Dynasty, mm. is that people did not make a big enough deal of. You know when it was uh, it took him centuries where he went back and learned like all about the loom and all about that stuff and it said like centuries later. Yes. Right? So Loki now has the scientific knowledge of OB, Victor Timely, almost mm. almost everybody, right? Yeah. That got so he Loki has now got all of that knowledge, all of that wealth of knowledge, right? And and it was dr- dropped at the drop of a hat, like, oh, yeah, th- you know, that's it now. He, he knows. But I'm like, well, Christ alive, surely that is going to be massive when we get to Avenger movies because mm-hmm. he can short now, he can surely, he surely has the capability to create science or adapt science in a way that he can be anyone now, I would have thought. Yeah, 100%. is that not going to be an element of that? Is like it, he's like, well, I've got, I've got an infinite amount of knowledge between Ob Can and anything else I acquired over literally centuries worth of knowledge. Mm. So I'm like, the guy, the guy is beefed up now. He's a beefed it's up, a, like it's really exciting. I mean, he did do uh, Jimmy Fallon for the first time since the strike ended. Mm. Um, was well, the first guest actually as an actor uh, on Jimmy Fallon since the strikes. And he did say it felt like it was a culmination of 14 years. Now, a lot of people have taken that as, that's it, he's done. There's not going to be ever a Loki again. He's, he's finished. Oh, oh. oh, I like Loki so much. I'm like, yeah, yeah. it's fucking Avengers films. He's yeah. going to, trust me, <laughs> he don't, he don't, he's, not, he's not being held, her- heralded as one of the largest <laughs> characters for them to just go, well, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. I, I can't understand how we bring him back. Be honest. He is quite literally holding all of the timelines together. <laughs> yeah. We are talking about a multiversal war that's about to break out at some point. Yeah, we're going to see him again at some point. Don't worry. All right. Yeah. I've just thought of a question uh, because you've just said those words, Matt. Is Loki technically now the Watcher? Uh, no. Okay. No. <laughs> oh, just, nah, I, no need to shut me down gently, mate. Just fucking put the knife straight at my back and put the fucking put it all the way in, mate. Just you know, keep turning it. If uh, not, no, thank if, you. If, if, any, if anything, stick it in my back and in my front, and you know, chop my head off with Thor's hammer while you're at it. Just go to town, mate. That's fine. Let me down gently. No, he's not the watcher. Uh, he's he's not. not the watcher. No. 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 I, I think he's not probably old... communicate so fa- to him, but I don't mm. think he is. No, I think they're two separate things. Can he not watch? The, is he not? So he, you don't think he can see into timelines that he's got? He's literally got in his hands. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think he can because he who remains could last time. Yeah. So I think True. he can. Yeah. I think he can. But I think in terms of the ever growing, you know, well, he's actually maintaining now the timelines because he's mm. holding them together. So he is the loom. But like, I don't think he has that kind of that level of cosmic. Yeah, you know, entertainers, and, and I think so. Pe- people have also raised from that episode about Kang and about ha- you know has this enabled them to actually not worry about Jonathan Majors anymore? Um, because yeah. you've got every- everyone's going. Well, hang on a minute. Like you still got all of his variants, and that's why the TVA is back because actually yeah. now they're fighting Kang variants rather than Loki variants. Mm. Um, but I do think this does provide Marvel an option should they need it to actually wipe out Jonathan Majors. Because yeah, you, could, you, could, cause you could actually go, Loki's just created a TVA to ensure this never happens again. Yeah, there's right. an option. Uh, yeah. And 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 they and you know and he could they could argue oh when when Loki did X, Y, and Z or or like I just said earlier the fact that he's gone centuries, he's gone through this knowledge for centuries, how do we not know that during those centuries he was killing all of the Kang variants anyway? So he, yeah. he could have been yeah. he could have been going through time absolutely yeah, you way. know, tarnishing all of the Kangs as he was going through. Um so it's kind of there are definite ways they yeah. could do it. Um and and it would intrigue me if they did go for that and then they brought in Doctor uh Doctor Doom. 
I think he that's said. a fair a fair thing. I don't. I'd be interested. I'm not. I'm not going to speculate what's happening with Kang. Um, but I think in terms of uh, Loki, I think it worked beautifully with his character. Um, yeah. It was so good. I was screaming out loud. Just so happy for him. What a way he got his throne, man. His glorious mm. purpose. He got it, and it was just so well. Again, that was such a well written show. Why? Why was there such a? Why is there such a discrepancy against all these other projects that are coming out? Genuinely intrigues me. Um, but you know, yeah. Hey. Again, again, you know, there are issues. Episode five, I don't think, was a great episode of Loki series two. Episode five was the one where you know we're 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 on tender hooks as to what's going to happen to the TVA, and then we spend half an episode of him dicking around going to find everyone's backstory. And I'm like, well, you could argue actually that felt like filler. Did yeah. we, you know, it, it's great, great to know that. But actually at that moment of time, is that what we as a viewer wanted to focus on? Probably not. Mm. So, and the whole episode was just him figuring out that he couldn't get it back an easy way. So I'm like, you could argue that episode five was a bit wasted, to be honest. Um, so certainly not perfect, yeah. but yeah, um, but yeah, it's very strong series in comparison. I'm not, I'm not comparing. Where you can't compare She Hulk to Loki. I mean, that's chalk and cheese. <laughs> um, but Loki, yeah, it was fantastic. Can't wait for more. Can't wait to hear what happens. We're we're only getting dead. Pull three now as a film for next year. Um, we get an Echo uh, next week, I think. Echo, mate. So we're going to be. We can talk about Echo. Yeah, end of November it's coming out. Amazing. Um, so we get a bit of Echo, um, but we're going to talk about Miss Marvel. Um, we've got a Miss Marvel episode, uh, and then we'll be on our monthly news roundup, mate. We will, and then it'll be Christmas. We've got our Christmas episodes as well. Mm, we can't Christmas. wait. Oh, it's going to be banging. Yeah. Awesome. Anyway. I will bid adieu to you. It sounds very busy in the Matt uh, household. You're getting it ready is. for your roast, mate. We are, we are, we are. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll speak to you on the flippity flip, mate. It's you been a joy. Take care, my yeah, friend. I'll see you later. Beautiful. Bye, bye. Uh, we'll talk about Miss Marvel next week. Take care. Bye. bye.